All right, class, in this tutorial, we're going to go through, we're going to UV unwrap the Gladius, right? And so I'm providing you with a Gladius to go through and UV unwrap. And then after you go through and UV unwrap the one that I made, I want you to go through and try to UV unwrap your own, right? So that way you can see how things work when you have a clean model like mine. And then we'll see what kind of differences there are between the two, and I will follow up with you on it. All right, but here we go. This is our, this is our basic mesh. Right, and so let's go ahead and select it. I'm going to come here to modify, and I'm going to go ahead and start by putting a UVW map modifier on this. I'm going to square off the values. Let's just do a length of 100 and a width of 100. And right now, uh, for my model, it is the planar map is projecting from the front. When you go to do your own, you may want to change the alignment on it, but you do want to have it from the front like this. So this gives us a good, clean base set of UVs. So we'll right click, convert that to poly. Those, those UVs are now permanent. So I'm gonna click unwrap UVW and open UV editor, right? So if we hit pack custom, it's gonna separate those two chunks. Let's go ahead and turn off show active map because there's nothing we wanna project. We're creating a unique set of UVs so we can create textures later. And let's also go in here to options, preferences, and turn off selection preview. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start by just region selecting the blade in the front. If I go down here to orbit, I orbit around to the back of my model, you'll see that even though I region selected, I only got the ones in the front. And that's because by default, ignore back face is on. So anytime I region select, it's only gonna get the polygons that are facing me, not the ones in the back. You can, of course, turn that off so you can region select everything. But when you're UV unwrapping, it's it's pretty helpful one to have. So I'm going to turn that back on. Also of note, you have, in addition of vertex, edge, and polygon, you also select by element. This is not as important as it used to be because uh, now you can double click and it'll grab the entire element. So that's pretty useful. All right, so going back here, I have my select I have ignore back face is till, still on. I know it's on because it's highlighted there. I'm in polygon. I'm going to region select just the blade and I'm going to hit heal. And something changed a little bit over here. I bet if I click in negative space and pack custom, I pack them two separately, right? Which is really weird. You see how they come in at two different sides? Let's just grab both of these and say tools relax, and then I'm going to keep on the unfold 3D optimize and hit apply. All right, I really didn't do anything. Let's do uh, change to relax by polygon and apply. There we go. So that relaxed them to their actual shapes. Now we'll just hit range. Okay. Really strange to me that the, the back and front are coming in differently there. It's not anything that I would expect. Huh. Let's keep going and we'll take a look at it. There is, uh, da, 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 what's the one I'm looking for here? Maybe I'm going to go into settings for unfold peel. Nope, that's not it. All right. So now, oddly enough, when I'm, when I'm doing my relax, for some reason it's relaxing the, the main body of this thing too, which is weird. It's getting distorted. Since it did get to start, I'm going to go ahead and just projection map it again, which gives it kind of a, a planar projection. I'm going to change the alignment and then turn that off. So now I can do things like if I come in here, I'm going to region select this bottom area and then hold alt and deselect the upper row. And what that did was it allowed me to select just the base. And I'm going to unfold that and then try to relax it. I'm also going to grab kind of this top nub here, control R to orbit, and I'm just going to grab just the very top portion and peel that and relax it. Now for the rest of this I'm going to start breaking this up into different chunks. Like let's go into, oops, I zoomed in a little bit too much. I'm going to go to edge and double click on this edge here and 
to find an edge seam selection there. I'm going to orbit around, and at the bottom of the handle, I'm going to double click that as well, convert that over, and then I want to find the back side of the sword again. So if I look here, let's maximize this viewport. Zoom in. So here's my here's my front, right? And where this green Y arrow is pointing, that's the back. And so I want to grab the edge. So let's make sure that lines up right. Yeah, that's right along that upper edge. We'll grab that loop here, but I'm going to do that. Grab those loops. I don't want it for everything though, so I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to deselect this main body here and this portion right here. Because I only want to have that loop for just the very top part and then the handle. I'll convert those over. And then let's do this. Let's uh, double click. If I go to Polygon, I'll click on the handle here. And because I, I, in this case, I actually went through and defined the top and bottom, I can expand my selection. Oh, it looked like, did it go all the way around? Oh my gosh, it did. I don't want that. So let's fix that. I'm going to go into actual seam creation. If I click, I can manually set seams. But if I hold Alt, I can manually remove them. And I just want to get rid of all these on the front. I don't want these. We'll just work to get rid of this. And I'm just holding Alt and clicking on them while having edit seams on. All right, there we go. Now I can go in and select a polygon. Oops, I still have that seam tool on. Alt to deselect. Turn that off. And now I can select a polygon and expand my selection. And hit peel. There we go. So that peels the handle. And then I can grab that very top portion. I can peel that as well, which I didn't fix that seam. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to select this edge here. And I want to weld this together. There we go. So we have all sorts of problems. There's that because I did that loop, it created all sorts of problems for us. So let's just do this. I'm going to right click and say convert that to poly. And so what that did, if I open up Unwrap UVW, effectively, let's uh, maximize this viewport and say open to the editor. So all the UV work I did is permanent. What isn't permanent is the individual seams I made. That is a per modifier thing. So if I hit pack custom, everything gets repacked in, which I don't want. So I'm going to undo that because I have a bunch of broken UV shells. I want this to still be connected. So what I'm going to do here is go into Vertex and just Region Select and say Weld Selected. That's one way to do it. Another way is if you have two things that are broken apart, but you want to recombine them together. In this case, this would be the, oops. In this case, it would be the base of the handguard here. I can, you can Region Select them. And there's actually a, a Reset Peel which will repeal two items together that have been separated. All right, there we go. So those are peeled. So now, the last things we got to do are our hand guard and then the base of the sword. So control R, look at this. So if I just hit peel or unfold, it kind of does this kind of action. I'm afraid that might give us too much distortion. I think what we'll do is just select one edge here and I'm going to, here in the UV editor, I'm going to grab the loop. And you'll see then it's only grabbing it just in this element. And I can define that. I can convert those edge selections to a seam. And then go into Polygon. Double click on this and peel it. There we go. And I could do the same thing up here at the top, wherever I may want that. In this case, I think I might want it back here. R. You may want it back here so it kind of matches the location where I have it for the handguard. So then I'm going to grab my loop here in UV space, convert that over, and then in Polygon, 
grab the whole thing and peel it. Right. So let's pack this, right? There's everything made in here unique. Let's grab everything, say tools, relax. And I'm going to relax by polygon angles. There we go. And that's just going to try and get them the, the meshes back to match their original shape as much as possible, which you can see is very hard for it to do when it's a round object. So now we can pack custom. The padding, it looks like the padding does a better job of getting them back to their original shape. Some of these tools can be a little bit buggy at times. Uh, let's see. So the last thing, let's turn off that view. Sorry, I left that on. Last thing we want to do is there's so much dead space here, right? As far as I know, you're always going to see this as a square when you're just working on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take everything and we're going to set this up so that when we create our unique texture for our swords, it's not going to be square. It's going to be uh, a two to one aspect ratio, twice as tall as it is wide. So I'm going to double click on my various elements. I'm going to rotate them. I'm going to try and imagine we're filling in half of a box here. Let's turn off our angle snap. It's just going to take these pieces and kind of rotate them to fill in an imaginary space. This is something that artists have to do all the time where they go through and they manually rearrange their UVs. There are some really good tools for auto packing these days. But sometimes you have to get in there and do hand stuff, right? Which is kind of like this. So in this case, all this dead space here. Let's grab this. Oh, before we do anything else, before I, I do that last step, it would be a good idea to do select, select overlap polygons and see if anything's overlapping. If there is, it'll be selected. So you can go over and look at that. You can try and sort out like what happened. Right. What did you miss? Is there an extra polygon there? Does something need to be peeled or projection map? Because those are really your two primary ways of UV unwrapping an object. All right, let's grab all of this. And now I'm going to come up here. I don't need to relax anymore. I'm going to grab the freeform tool. I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to pull it over to the side here. And what this is doing is, yes, it is distorting it. But what, it, what we're going to do is we're going to create a texture that isn't square. It's going to be half the width, right? And so the actual texture is going to look correct. And this is going to give us a more efficient and useful use of uh, two-dimensional texture space. And that's only in this case for the sword because there was so much dead space. All right, let's just uh, right-click and convert that at poly to make that. Oops. Hold on. One step. Edit. Undo that and open that UV editor. What I want you to do is give me a snip that shows me both of the sword. Oops, looks like I still have my column up there. Let's say new. Oops, try that one more time. New. There we go. I want to see both the sword as well as its UV layout. And so you'll turn in this image. And then once you're done with taking your SNP, right click and convert that to poly. And that's going to take all that UV work and make it permanent. Also, you can see here that my sword has my name. So now I'm going to be Gladius. And then there's this LP. The LP stands for low poly. So I want you to go through and I want you to name your sword your last name, first initial, sword underscore LP. Right? Because we're going to make what's called a high poly uh, next week in class or in a future class. All right. So there you go. Now we're ready to move on to the next lab.